Bitcoin is still in a bullish trend, as we can see here on the chart using the money line technical indicator, holding strong above previous resistance levels and climbing towards the next, which is around 46 to 47K. And this year, Bitcoin has been the best performing asset by a long shot, up over 140%, trumping other traditional assets like global stocks, up only an average of 15%, gold up 14%, global bonds 2%, and commodities at a negative 8% return over the year. And with this recent price surge, Bitcoin market cap overtakes Berkshire Hathaway and soars past 800 billion. A few days ago, Bitcoin became the 10th biggest asset by market cap following Meta, formerly Facebook, and Nvidia. And more recently, Bitcoin actually overtook Meta's position as well, making it the ninth largest asset by market cap with gold in the first position with a market cap of around 13.7 trillion, followed by Apple, Microsoft, Saudi Aramco, Google, Amazon, Silver, and Nvidia. And when comparing the market cap of Bitcoin with the market cap of gold, it becomes very obvious that we are still early and still have a ton of room to grow because the market cap of Bitcoin, which is all of the total amount of money in Bitcoin, is still less than single individual corporations like Apple, Google, and Amazon. The amount of potential we have as a new asset class that is gaining notoriety, adoption, and social agreement as a valuable asset is unfathomable. Even if some of the most notable investors in the world, like Warren Buffett, liken it to rat poison. After news hit that Bitcoin's market cap trumped Berkshire Hathaway's, John Deaton tweeted this savage response. That's a pretty damn big bottle of rat poison. Yes, indeed. So as Bitcoin approaches its previous all-time high of around $69,000, lest we forget to factor in the massive devaluation and loss of purchasing power of the dollar since back in 2020. Check it out. The aggregated compounded US inflation rate since the money printer fired up back in 2020 is about 23%. This means Bitcoin won't technically hit a new all-time high until the price breaks above $85,000. Crazy. The high inflation, the reckless spending, the unfathomable amount of debt, it's all courtesy of the international cult of central banks and their bought and paid for government puppets. And what's funny is that a few months ago, an old video of Warren Buffett resurfaced where he explains how he could end the US deficit within five minutes. Take a look. Ew, these problems are, are problems that have built up over decades, and there hasn't been a Congress that's been mature enough or a president that's been mature enough to take this head off. I, I, could, I, could, I could end the deficit in five minutes. I, you just pass a law that says that anytime there's a deficit of more than 3% of GDP, all sitting members of Congress are ineligible for re-election. Yeah, yeah. Now, now you've got the incentives in the right place, right? So it, it's capable of being done. And... They're trying to use the incentive now that we're going to blow your brains out, America. You know, in terms of your uh, of, of your terms of your debt worthiness over time, and and that's being used as a threat. Uh, a more effective threat would be just to say, if you guys can't get it done, we'll get some other guys to get it done. Nice. Let me know what you think about Warren's idea in the comments below. Another popular guy in the financial sector recently made a statement about what they would do if they were the government as well. Ladies and gentlemen, CEO of J.P. Morgan, Jamie Dimon. I've always been deeply opposed to crypto, Bitcoin, etc. You pointed out the only true use case for it is criminals, drug traffickers, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance, and that is a use case uh, because it is somewhat anonymous, not fully, and because you can move money instantaneously and because it doesn't go through, as you mentioned, all these systems have built up over many years, you know your customers, sanctions, OFAC, it's, they can get bypass all of that. I, if I was the government, I'd close it down. Now, instead of pointing out a few interesting things about his comments, I'm going to let Song A Day Man, who remixed the hecking heck out of Jamie Dimon, take it from here. Bitcoin, etc. You pointed out the only true use case for it is criminals, drug traffickers, anti money laundering, tax avoidance, criminals, drug traffickers, anti money laundering, tax avoidance. The largest corporate fine at the time Girls, 13 billion dollars, that's billion Girls, for selling that secure Tax 
avoidance, criminals, drug traffickers, anti money laundering, tax avoidance. Drug traffickers, anti money laundering, tax avoidance, criminals, drug traffickers, anti money laundering, tax avoidance, criminals, drug traffickers, anti money laundering, tax avoidance, tax avoidance, criminals, criminals, drug traffickers, anti money laundering, tax avoidance, tax avoidance. Oh, the irony, hypocrisy, and blatant corruption. Such a joke. Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and in this video, we are going to explore some key events and dates we need to be mindful of over the next few months that could affect Bitcoin's rally in the short term by cooling it off or heating it up. Let's hit it. Please be sure to check out our sponsors, I Trust Capital, Morales Money, and Tangent Wallet. Buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrencies as well as silver and gold tax-free with your own IRA or individual retirement account or roll over your current 401k with iTrust Capital. Find and trade altcoin gems before they pump with Morales money and get access to the Moneyline tool that increases our chances of buying and selling at the right times to take profits, which is 77% off until December 25th using the link below. And invest in your very own cold storage hardware wallet like Tangent Wallet. Their new Tangent Wallet is out now with a ton of cool new features. It has a sleek black matte design, it is the size of a credit card, multi-currency, multi-chain, and it's by far the easiest crypto wallet to set up and use on the market right now. And it's extremely affordable. So scroll down and use links below to access the correct and official sites as well as redeem any special offers they have for us. Sweet. Next week, there will be a Federal Reserve meeting to decide interest rates for the final time in 2023. And there are only three ways it could go. Interest rates stay the same, interest rates go up, or interest rates go down. Historically, when the Federal Reserve stops raising rates and pauses, interest rates start coming down pretty quickly, which we can see clearly in this chart where interest rates increase like a staircase and decrease like an elevator straight down. My random wild guess is they will pause again. And then in their next meeting at the end of January 2024, maybe they start decreasing as it's an important election year for the US and everyone who is currently in office has a big incentive to make sure the market does well so they can try to stay in office. Let me know what your random wild guess about the Fed's interest rate decisions are in the comments below. Now, the next date we should be mindful of is the approval window for the spot Bitcoin ETF. It technically expires between January 5th and 10th where the SEC has to either approve it or kick the can down the road again. And also in January on the 17th, in the SEC's case versus Coinbase, there will be an oral argument in front of Judge Catherine Polk Vela between the two parties, where each side will argue their case. And within about two weeks following that, the judge will make a ruling or it's possible that the case continues to trial. Now, in some cases, judges will make a preliminary ruling the day before an oral argument, where they pretty much give everyone an idea of what they understand about the case and which way they are leaning, either for or against one party or another's case. So if the judge makes a preliminary ruling, in this case, it would happen on January 16th. And what's interesting about this judge is that she's the same judge that presided over the Uniswap case. And in that case, she suggested that Bitcoin and Ethereum were commodities and not subjected to the SEC's regulations, which is bullish. Either way, her final ruling should happen sometime between January 17th and January 31st. And if she rules in favor of Coinbase, this would be a massive, massive win for the crypto industry because it would create a strong legal precedent that cryptocurrencies are in fact not securities and should not be regulated by the SEC. Bullish. However, she could also rule in favor of the SEC, which would be very bearish. Historically though, in the US, the judicial system has done us a lot of favors, usually ruling in our favor and sticking it to the SEC. So next month could be a huge month for the crypto industry in relation to the US legal system, which could affect Bitcoin's price action, as well as whether or not a spot Bitcoin ETF is approved within the next few weeks or months. It's possible that the SEC is actually waiting for the outcome of the Coinbase case before making any decisions about spot Bitcoin and spot Ethereum ETFs. Or maybe they aren't. 
we shall see. Either way, the crypto market should be interesting over the next few weeks into 2024 and through the end of January. So if you like this kind of content where we stay up to date on all the latest crypto news and key dates to be mindful of, let me know by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and let me know in the comments below. And as always, make sure we are transferring any crypto we are buying to hold for the long term from the exchange to our own cold storage hardware wallets. And if you don't know how to do it, I'm going to show you how easy it is to do with Tangent Wallet right now. It literally takes like 60 seconds. Let's move some Bitcoin we have in our Coinbase account off of the exchange together to hold in our very own cold storage hardware wallet, Tangent Wallet. Open the Tangent app, tap scan card, scan the card, enter the access code, scan the card again, and from here on the dashboard, press and hold Bitcoin, then tap copy address. Next, open the Coinbase Exchange app, tap send, tap Bitcoin, paste the Tandrum Bitcoin wallet address into the to field and tap continue. Enter the amount of Bitcoin we want to send. I always recommend sending a small amount as a test first to make sure everything is good to go. In this case, we are sending $100 worth. Tap preview, make sure everything looks good, then tap send now and it's on its way. In a few minutes or so, when we open the Tangent Wallet app, we will see the $100 worth of Bitcoin that we now completely own and control. Repeat this process for any other type of cryptocurrency by copying the corresponding address on Tangent Wallet. Also making sure we select the right network, like for example with Tether, there are many other available networks, like Ethereum versus BNB Smart Chain versus Solana and more. Awesome. If you'd like to learn more about how the money line works and how it has performed historically in past bull and bear cycles, check out this video. If you would like to learn how to use Tangent Wallet and transfer crypto off of exchanges to our own cold storage hardware wallets, check out this video. And to get your very own Tangent Wallet, click on the link on the screen. Like and subscribe for more. Be safe out there.